Russia steps up attacks in the Ukrainian-held areas of Donetsk and keeps hitting energy infrastructure in Kherson. Brussels Green Week kicks off focusing on water resilience. Russia has stepped up strikes on Ukrainian-held areas in the southern Donetsk region. Over the past 48 hours, at least two people died in a shelling on a residential area in Selidove. Ukraine's state emergency service claimed that fatalities include a 13-year-old boy whose body was found under the rubble and a 53-year-old man. In the same region, Russian forces also hit the village of Oleksievo Druzhkivka. Seven people were injured and over a hundred houses got damaged. The village is around 12 kilometers away from Kramatorsk, one of the key Donetsk cities still in Ukrainian hands. Russia's allegedly carried out the strike with highly explosive aerial bombs. The same weapons were reportedly used on the Berislavsky district in Kherson, where three people were killed and several others were wounded, including French volunteers. Local authorities say Russia is purposely terrorizing the population there, launching attacks even on settlements that have already been severely damaged. They also added that energy facilities keep being targeted. European foreign affairs ministers gave their green light to reactivate an EU border mission at Rafa. High representative of the EU for foreign affairs, Joseph Borrell, said. Israel faced new condemnation over strikes on Rafa that local health officials say killed at least 45 Palestinians. I proposed to the ministers, they, they gave me green light, the political green light, to reactivate UBAM, our mission, control border mission in Rafa, which has been sleeping for years, not active. This could play a useful role in supporting the entry of people into Gaza, enter in and out. Italian Defense Minister Guido Crosetto said that such strikes will have long-standing repercussions. Israel is spreading hatred, he said. He also added that he would have acted differently. Turkish President Erdogan condemned the deadly strikes on Rafah over the weekend. The Turkish leader has stepped up his criticism of Israel following its military offensive in Gaza, accusing it of carrying out war crimes and genocide, something Israel denies. Since becoming Italy's Prime Minister, Giorgia Meloni's key challenge has been to curb illegal migration. But delivering on the main promise of her political program has been particularly tough, given the sharp increase in the number of arrivals from Northern Africa since the beginning of her mandate. As she launched Brothers of Italy's electoral campaign, she took credit for changing Europe's approach to migration. If we look at official data for the first three months of 2024, the number of arrivals has decreased by more than half compared to the same period last year. Italy's government strongly supported the recent deal between the EU and Tunisia, hailing it as a success that has led to a decrease of almost 60 percent in the number of departures. I dati del Ministero degli Interni confermano una riduzione degli sbarchi e degli arrivi in Italia rispetto al 2023. Qual è il ruolo dell'accordo con la Tunisia in questo tipo di situazione? Molto probabilmente è dovuto al alla maggiori respingimenti che stiamo osservando su quella area geografica, a un inespimento delle pene e questo potrebbe significare una deviazione dei flussi migratori verso altri paesi come per esempio la Libia. Eh, in termini politici noi abbiamo cercato di porre un rimedio, una specie di tappo a questi flussi migratori in una situazione che sembrerebbe emergenziale ma che invece è di lungo periodo e quindi bisognerebbe di investimenti di altro tipo, per esempio in welfare. But the deal which has been criticized by several humanitarian organizations and MEPs for failing to respect human rights is not the only piece of legislation to have steered controversy. The adoption of the EU's pact on migration and asylum has never seen Italy's ruling majority and opposition parties so divided. Non serve esternalizzare le frontiere, serve di creare percorsi regolari e regolati che consentano alle persone di viaggiare degnamente, arrivare nei nostri sistemi, essere utili a se stesse, alle nostre economie, ai nostri sistemi sociali e l'Europa ha le regole e la visione politica per farlo. Crediamo che l'immigrazione sia una delle sfide più importanti, vogliamo difesa delle frontiere 
interazione con i paesi di transito, meccanismi di migrazione legale, rafforzamento delle agenzie europee che si occupano di immigrazione e poi più in generale un piano Marshall per l'Africa che consenta di avviare virtuosi percorsi di sviluppo. Divisions in the Italian Parliament have also emerged following the government's call to develop the outsourcing of asylum policies, such as the protocol signed between Italy and Albania, with this approach gaining more support among member states. Giorgio Orlandi for Euronews in Rome. Hungary's Viktor Orban and Belgium's Vlan Belang are leading the way in a social media ad splurge ahead of polling day. According to a Euronews analysis, Orbán's Fidesz spent between €60,000 and €70,000 on a campaign over the last 30 days, making it the most costly political ad offered in the EU by Google as the campaign draws to its close. The same goes for Belgium's Flemish separatist party Vlaams Belang, which spent between 50 and 60,000 euros for a campaign ad calling for less immigration and more purchasing power. There's been a lot of interest in how social media is used in election campaigns, um, particularly since the Cambridge Analytical scandal of a few years ago when uh, this political consultancy company gained data on tens of millions of Facebook users um, and used it to uh, allegedly uh, target ads towards them uh, and influence the outcome of elections. This has become an area of quite some controversy. Though it's often common for political parties to use paid ads on Google, there's still plenty of controversy over how political funds are spent online. Clearly there are different rules in each member state about exactly what the limits for how much they can spend in a pre-election period are. Um, but there's no suggestion that the candidates have, have breached uh, any of those rules. Um, the one thing that is outlawed by new EU rules brought in in, in February is the use of uh, using sensitive personal data to micro-target ads. So if you try and identify what a Facebook user's political beliefs or religious views are uh, and um, direct advertising towards them based on that sensitive information, that is frowned upon, as is uh, funding election campaigns from outside the EU, given all the allegations we've seen about Russian interference in elections. να δημιουργηθεί ένα παρατηρητήριο δικαιοσύνης σε κάθε χώρα, το οποίο να παρακολουθεί α, μέσω του Ευρωπαϊκού Κοινοβουλίου το πώς απονέει με τη δικαιοσύνη στα κράτη-μέλη τόσο σε επίπεδο ρυθμών απονομής, όσο κυρίως σε επίπεδο ποιότητας απονομής, αλλά και ανεξαρτησίας ε, δικαιοσύνης σε σχέση δηλαδή με το αν μπορεί και πρέπει να είναι εντελώς ανεξάρτητη η απονομή της δικαιοσύνης σε κάθε κράτος μέλος. If I am re-elected as a member of the European Parliament, I will still keep on fighting for the rule of law in Europe. We have to make sure that there is no rebate on the rule of law in Europe, that member states still be democracies, and we have our rule of law conditionality, and we have to keep on fighting against autocrats uh, and uh, for the rule of law, democracy, and fundamental rights in Europe. Pepinster in eastern Belgium still bears the scars of dramatic floods that hit in July 2021. Images from the flooding shocked the European Union as the same torrential rain and flooding also impacted Germany and the Netherlands. The toll was particularly high, with 240 deaths and around 50 billion euros in damages. For the mayor of Pepinster, this extreme weather event served as a catalyst to wake up to the consequences of climate change. Je pense qu'on est qu'au début et que on doit absolument prendre toute une série de mesures bien plus importantes, je dirais bien plus fondamentales et structurelles pour que on puisse faire face à ce phénomène. On doit commencer par tout ce qui est aménagement du territoire. Euh, aménagement des berges, euh, je dirais des, des rivières, et également, euh, je crois que tout ce qui est ici, les fagnes qui sont 
je dirais, vraiment l'éponge le, le, de, de la région en cas de pluie, il faut que les failles soient retravaillées de telle sorte qu'elles jouent à nouveau ce rôle. In a report published this month, the European Environment Agency sounded the alarm that 12% of Europe's population lives in areas at risk. These extreme phenomena are likely to multiply and intensify in the future. Il y a deux choses principales. Effectivement, des moyens financiers. Ça veut dire aussi que dans le cadre financier européen, toutes les politiques d'adaptation doivent être intégrées. Les pays doivent massivement investir dans les politiques d'adaptation. Ça, c'est une chose. Et puis d'autres choses, c'est des changements de pratique, la mise en place des solutions basées sur la nature. C'est ça qui est le plus efficace. Et donc ça... Ça ne coûte pas nécessairement plus cher, mais c'est vraiment des changements de modèles, des changements d'état d'esprit, presque des changements culturels. According to the European Environment Agency, flooding could intensify mainly in northwestern Europe and in the center of the continent. The European Space Agency's latest scientific mission was successfully launched into space from the United States on Tuesday bearing a satellite that may provide vital insight into one of the most pressing issues around climate change. The Earth Care satellite will study how the formation of clouds and the density of aerosols in the atmosphere impact the Earth's temperature. The satellite separated from the rocket 10 minutes into flight and made its first contact with the ground station in South Africa less than an hour after launch.